The All-Star Game is in Cincinnati, where Pete Rose, a.k.a. Charlie Hustle, once led the Big Red Machine in the 70s. Rose will be back on the field tonight to be honored as a part of the Reds franchise for Rose, of course, hoping for reinstatement into Major League Baseball by new commissioner Rob Manford. Mixed feelings on this subject. Former Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda weighed in on this subject, saying, quote, You have got to be out. He has got to be suspended for life. If you are stupid enough to go out and bet on your own team and bet on baseball, there has got to be something wrong. If my brother did it, I would say the same thing. So that's what Florida thinks, but you can't deny the numbers. First all-time in games played, hits, and tied for first in 200 hit seasons. All right, so we got Lasorda's thoughts. Should Pete Rose be eligible for the Hall of Fame, Stephen? Uh, my position on this matter has been um, clear from day one. I have always been a proponent of Pete Rose being inducted into the Hall of Fame. I think it is absolutely shameful uh, that this society uh, has not forgiven this man. Uh, Pete Rose made a lot of mistakes. There's no question about it. He was a liar a perpetual liar, a serial liar. He was arrogant about it. Uh, the late Bar Giamatti and others, Faye Vincent to this day, uh, John Dowd and others, uh, the lead in the, the special investigator that, that, that discovered Pete Rose's uh, you know, crimes against the sport, meaning gambling on the sport of baseball, which ultimately led to his lifetime ban. Uh, we all understand all of that, but I will keep this in mind, Skip Bayless. Pete Rose received a permanent ban on August 24th 1989. Uh, according to Pete Rose, he received that ban two days before his daughter's birth. She is 26 years of age now. This man is still banned from the sport of baseball. When we think about us as a society and how forgiving we have been, we have forgiven killers, we have forgiven molesters. We have forgiven rapists. We have forgiven so many people. And I bring that up in all honesty because opinions about Pete Rose are not limited to the sport of baseball. We have a whole bunch of sanctimonious hypocrites running around this nation talking about how this man shouldn't be forgiven. Yet we see who has been forgiven. I think, and I, and I hate to bring up these names because even though I've been hard on them in the past, again, I believe this is America. This is the greatest country in the world. It's the land of second chances. So I'm happy that Mark McGuire has a job in baseball. OK, but Mark McGuire cheated. He used performance enhancing drugs. I'm waiting for San Francisco or somebody not just to hire Barry Bonds as a hidden instructor during spring training. I want to talk about a full time job. OK, I hope that Sammy Sosa gets a job in baseball. I'm looking at Ryan Braun playing in Milwaukee right now where not only was he a cheater. OK, but this dude literally, literally tried to get somebody fired for telling the truth. I'm watching A-Rod being celebrated, okay, when he was a serial cheater. List goes on and on and on. But Pete Rose is number one in every major category imaginable, not to mention the fact that he has what I believe to be the greatest nickname in all of professional sports history, Charlie Hustle. That means he got there by busting his tail, working his butt off to be as great as he was. I am not in any way glossing over the wrong that he has done and the fact that he deserved to be punished. But I just remember, and I wasn't happy, and I'll leave it at that, but I wasn't happy when ESPN came out with a report just a couple of weeks ago about Pete Rose and documents talking about he bet on the game as a player, you know, the timing of it all. I didn't like it one bit, to be quite honest with you, but it is what it is. We're a news organization as well, and that comes with the territory. But my issue with it is that you got all-stars. Didn't Nelson Cruz test positive for performance enhancing drug use? And this brother is an all-star and being celebrated and revered. And we're talking about kids showing up at this game to celebrate the home run derby, the all-star game, and all of this other stuff. We want to bring that up, okay? But not only will we not forgive Pete Rose, but we keep reminding the world as to why we won't forgive him. So we don't want to let kids forget him and the wrong that he did. But we want to gloss over performance enhancing drug use going on today. The list goes on and on. I just find it to be incredibly reprehensible. And I just think that it speaks badly of our society, particularly from a hypocritical standpoint, to not forgive this man. If I said that he didn't do it, 
or was it that big of a deal? That would be irresponsible on my part. And I know the rules were there in the clubhouse, as they say. The sign, you see it plastered all over the wall. No gambling on baseball lights. I get all of that. But my God, this was 1989. It is 2015. The brother is serving 26 years and counting. The lack of compassion in this country for this man, I find to be incredibly reprehensible. And I just want to take a moment to applaud the people of Cincinnati, because even though I think they've been a bit overbearing in their support of Pete Rose throughout the years, mm -hmm. it is more than apropos. Not only do I want to congratulate the city of Cincinnati, but the sport of Major League Baseball for allowing Pete Rose to be celebrated tonight with Joe Morgan, mm -hmm. Barry Locke, and, and those guys. And I, it's just a shame. Ryan really Braun is. also an all-star as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That's why I brought him up. I'm sorry. I hope Pete Rose is watching because you stated his case eloquently. But as usual, as you have for several years on this show, you missed the bigger issue point here. And it's why Pete Rose should never be allowed in the Hall of Fame. I want to state up front, I have absolutely no problem with Pete Rose being honored and hero worshiped tonight by his hometown. The, the city that loves him most, the city he once owned, the city of Cincinnati, Ohio. I have absolutely no problem with the fact that Pete Rose for years has made lots and lots of money off his baseball greatness because as we know all the numbers, there is absolutely no argument, all time great. Some people think all time greatest. And I agree with you about his nickname. But now we know for sure that Pete Rose bet on baseball as a manager and as a player. He repeatedly, over many years, crossed a line in the sport of baseball or the sport of basketball or the sport of football or hockey that you cannot cross. He bet on baseball. He threatened the very credibility of the sport. He threatened the trust that the fans have that this game is played on the up and up. Because I'm gonna remind you, Mr. Smith, that back in those days, there was no internet gambling. Pete Rose had to associate directly with the bookmakers or the representatives of the bookmakers, some bad people. And he risked falling into the trap that many athletes in the past fell into. They got into a gambling debt hole, and to get out of it, they had to throw games. What was the biggest scandal this sport has ever suffered? You can throw at me the steroid era. I will throw back at you the 1990. I know it was way before. 1990 Black Sox 1919 scandal. Black Sox scandal. Got it. In which members of one team in the World Series opted to take payouts to throw World Series games. Mm -hmm. You just cannot risk it. And Pete Rose risked it. And, and trust me on this, even though we don't have any proof that he bet against his team, it really didn't matter to the bookmakers or the gamblers who were watching closely. Mm -hmm. Because on the days that Pete Rose opted not to bet on his team as a player, they're thinking, aha, he's not betting on today's starting pitcher because he doesn't trust today's starting pitcher against that team. So you're sending messages behind closed doors that way to the gamblers. You're associating with all the wrong people. And what happened was Pete Rose became the poster boy for just how seriously baseball is going to take betting on baseball if you're involved in the baseball game. For years, for decades now, all those 26 years you talked about, the message got sent through the face of Pete Rose for generation upon generation, this will not be tolerated. Actually, Pete Rose has served a great purpose for this, the game that he loved. He became the essence of what not to do, how, how not to threaten the credibility of this game. So keeping him out continues to send a message to today's players. You can cross lots of lines here. We'll let you pay your price for performance enhancing drugs and come back and perform but you can't cross that line two points i want to make number one you brought up the 1990 white Sox, uh 1919, the black, 1919 mm -hmm. black Sox scandal okay uh were not obviously they were fixing games are you aware of the fact that at least according to a few articles that i've read a couple of them are hall of famers a few of them so you have members of the black Sox scandal 
fixing games that are in the Hall of Fame. So to me, that shreds that argument against dig against. Yeah, but Kennesaw Gip Mountain Landis, yeah, the commissioner, just threw him out of the I, game. I, I understand he threw him out of the game, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that we're talking about there are two issues with Pete Rose: whether or not he should be allowed to return to the game of baseball, be employed in some capacity, and to me, him being on Fox Sports as a baseball analyst is good enough for me. Uh, but I'm saying in terms of him as a Hall of Famer, what you are trying to do is make sure that the books completely wipe and eradicate any any record of the greatness that Pete Rose displayed on the field. Uh, by the way, are the networks willing to give that money back? Is the sport of baseball willing to give the money back that they generated from his exploits on the field when he was doing what he was doing? Whether it's eclipsing Ty Cobb's all-time hits record he, or doing the things paid. that he's done. He, no, he, I'm saying he got paid. I'm talking about the sport and how they benefited mm -hmm. from the exploits of Pete Rose. I don't think that they're doing so. And we have to keep that in mind. You've got folks from the Black Sox scandals who are, who are in the Hall of Fame. But we also have to keep in mind this, Skip Bayless. When you talk about Pete Rose and the sport that he helped uplift and what have you, think about this reality. So many times we've heard people say, if Pete Rose mm -hmm. had just apologized, if Pete Rose had come clean, if Pete Rose had admitted, et cetera, et cetera, he would have been forgiven by now. I'm sorry. Then that means that there's wiggle room to whatever policy I don't you want to implement. That. I'm just telling you what they say. We see it all the time. We see it all the time that he is denigrated and excoriated because of how he conducted himself during the investigation That's and thereafter. Yes. Well, I'm just saying these are from the people that are directly involved. Whether okay, it's but a Faye Vincent, whether it's a John Dow, or okay. well, not Giamatti, but yeah. whether it's a Faye Vincent, the John Dow's of the world, and others, they have said. The manner in which he conducted, we've got great reporters like Jason Stark, like Buster Olney, like Tim Kirchin and others who have religiously talked about how part of the problem is how he conducted himself. I am simply saying that gives the at least the impression that there's some wiggle room. And the fact that there seems to be no wiggle room when it comes to Pete Rose is because of the vitriol he's generated because of his behavior, not just the gambling. And that's where my point about forgiveness comes in. Let it go. He messed up. Let it you, go. You know what? You keep using the word forgiveness. I, I think everybody forgives him. But no one wants to forget what he did. Hall they, of want, they don't want to let today's generation forget Hall what he of did. Famer, Pete Rose deserves to be there because he produced on the field. That should never be erased. You don't want to let him back in the game and give him a salary, that's fine. But you should not be allowed to deny the greatness that somebody gave to us for over 20 years in Major League Baseball. That in itself is just as big of a crime to me. Okay, and last quick point to your Black Sox point. They're not in my Hall of Fame, in my mental Hall of Fame. Sure. Okay. All right.